Hey, welcome uh, to Blood Prison Shakedown, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us again. Today, I've got uh, Brent Stukesbury from The Haunted Hoorah. How are we doing today, buddy? Hey, doing good. Thanks, Vic. Yeah? You yep. guys excited to be back? Mm. Oh, it's been a long time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So when was your last year? Uh, 2000. Well, that's a good one. 2014, 15, 17. 2017. 17. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because we came down for that, had a blast, which we'll get into that maybe a little bit later. But um, so you've been gone. Geez, this will be four, four years. Yeah. Should have only been three, but you know, with the yeah. with pandemic COVID and, all, and, yeah. and all that crap. Yep. Well, one, I can say personally, because I was at your old haunt that I'm, I'm glad you guys are coming back. We had such a good time when we were down there. Amazing haunt. I, I mean, it was just everything from the atmosphere, getting on the military transport vehicles, you know, getting dog. I've still got my dog tags that <laughs> I got right. at the beginning. Still got them. You know what I mean? I, I, it was just great. You know, um, get, just getting your ass kicked from beginning to end was we loved it. We had a good time. Mm -hmm. But you guys then had to. Moved to Marion. You went for in Ashley, Ohio, and now you're in Marion, Ohio, correct? Yeah, we're over, we're at 311 Rose now in Marion. Okay. So we got a big building this time. So. Yeah. Well, I would never knew what your building was even the last time. <laughs> Honestly, I was blindfolded going in. And then when we left, I was like, where the hell are we? How do we get back here? It was. I remember talking like, earlier, we were um, just amazed at how like we were like clueless as to what way was up. And that was one of the the great things. But you had to move. So let's, let's get into that because... A lot, a lot of the people I talk to, my friends in the, you know, industry here, you know, were just like, yeah, they got kind of the, the raw end of the deal on this thing. And you tried to fight it. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm glad. Uh, Vori, a uh, law firm out of Columbus, took us on. Yeah. And uh, if it hadn't been for them, we wouldn't have even got, we wouldn't have got anything out of it. Yeah. We, we were, eminent domain, you don't win eminent domain. The, only, the best you can do is get paid back for some of, the, some of your losses. Really? Uh, there's, there's no winning. So eminent domain. So basically it was a school district thing. It wasn't necessarily like the government building a highway. Yeah. You would think school districts wouldn't have that ability, but they do. If That's it's for crazy. the greater good, anybody, any government agency can use eminent domain. So let's, let's figure out then just so everybody understands. Cause I remember reading about it. I'm just like, it's crazy. So the school district came in and said, they want your land. To build a school on? Is that what happened? Yeah. Well, first they turned it down years ago because yeah. they could have bought it for a dollar and they turned it down. So I step in, I buy it. I'm like, hey, let's do a haunted house. You know, that, that oh, type yeah. of thing. Well, the old house, that's perfect. Yeah. You know, to go with the other building we had in town. So yeah, um, they came They came back four years later and they said, uh, you know, we're, we uh, decided we're going to build our school on your property and we already had it surveyed. So we'll see you. <laughs> so like, wow so yeah we we ended up getting attorneys and and fighting it out but that was still two two years in the in the courts so when that happens it's just crazy just hearing your stories is, is infuriating but it's like there's this perception that you're gonna get this giant sum of money for for what they're taking but apparently that wasn't the case no i mean they look at what what you paid for it yeah. And then they divide it down and then they come at you with the fact that, that they don't have to pay you anything and what are you going to do about it? They're the biggest, I mean, anybody who uses it, in this case it was a school district, Yeah, they're the bullies. Yeah. So they come in and they say, well, you know, what are you going to do? I said, well, I don't know. It's crazy. You know, went through a couple of different attorneys before we got the ones we got, but right. they were literally not going to pay anything. And it all I, at the towards the end, I was pleading can we at least have our, can we at least have another season? Yeah. Cause if you give us another season, you know, before you start imposing your stuff, I can make some money to recoup my own losses. Right. Exactly. And their thing was, no, you know, we want you out now. So, uh, it, you know, going through the court system at least gave us another year to kind of reimburse f our future losses a yeah. little. Yeah. But that's just nuts, man. Because <clears throat> it's like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I know we need schools and you know, your kids got a good place to go, but it's like, you know, if you're just going to come in and, and claim that and stakes, stake a claim on somebody else's, you know, property, you'd at least be like, OK, we know we're doing this. So we're going to make sure you're good to go before we do something like that. You know, you know? and that's kind of how we approached it at first, because all they needed was a bus turnaround. Yeah, that's all our property was for them. That's it. That's it. They, they leveled everything just to turn around buses. Oh my and, gosh. and it was like, well, 
you know, can we, can you help us find another spot? You know, I, I was approaching kind of naive, but I'm like, can you do something with us? Like help us out. Yeah. And they're like, you can do whatever you can find something, just go. And that was, wow. that was how they approached the whole thing all the way through it. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I mean, I don't know how it, I don't know the whole story on how it turned out. I'm, I'm assuming you got what you needed from, uh, you had a lawsuit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Eminent Domain is, is a lawsuit filed by them against me. So they oh. were suing me. And there was nothing I could do about it but try to defend myself or just walk away. So when Voris uh, took our case, yeah, we were able to postpone a year, which gave us another season. We were able to like stake, show our losses. Mm-hmm. But even in Eminent Domain, like if you were a farmer and you, they took your cornfield, yeah, they can take your cornfield and they don't have to pay you for your corn. They can just take it. Well, we were unique because yeah. we were tied to our house. Without our property, the, our property was our haunted house. Right. So we had a unique case that allowed uh, losses at the end of this to at least partially pay us back for okay, you know, everything that was going on. But I mean, we could have had, you know, like you pointed out, three, four more years in. We were sure. we were getting to the top of our game. We had just figured out, you know, in every haunted house. You get into it, you, you kind of figure out what you're going to do with your haunted house. Right. We had just figured out how we could do some amazing things. And yeah, next thing you know, you're out. Yeah. You get definitely hitting your stride for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, as much as it sucks and you had to go through that, and it's true because I've, I've been run through the ringer here, you know, um, since I've come to Mansfield, there's been some things where it's just like, Every year, me and the the guy that runs the place, he's just like, man, there's some every year that's always, you know, putting us, you know, back or or holding us back somehow. So I, I get what you're saying. Now we didn't have that happen, obviously, but um, you know, I get it. There's always a struggle. It seems like to get these things off the ground, but um, you know, we started good. It puts a bad a haunted house has a bad taste in some people's mouths. They don't understand you're going to run it professionally. You're going to take care of things. You you don't want anybody to get caught in a fire. You don't want anybody not to find an exit. You know you're doing it professionally, but absolutely they 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 kind of go into it as if you're just trying to run something under the radar. You know, but we're yeah. we're in the middle of our sprinkler system issues, but we knew that they were there. So you know we want with our new location we want. We've got exits. We've got 50 foot walk pathways, you know, before exits, you know, we're trying to hit everything right. I've, de- I've met with the right people at the beginning of this. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, I think we're on a good, good direction. Mm-hmm.